ESPN Radio Network. This is Mike Greenberg for the best in local sports talk and play-by-play. It's SEMO ESPN. This is a proud presentation of Mississippi River Radio Sports, the sports authority. And now, at last, it's time for the Red Hawks Coaches Show on the SEMO ESPN Radio Sports Network. I have more to tell you. The Southeast Coaches Show airs every Tuesday at noon on ESPN 92.9 FM and 1220 AM. Live from Wings, etc. in Cape and Jackson. This is your chance to delve deep, deep into the Red Hawks football season with head coach Tom Matukowicz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go live to Wings. Etc. Right here on Welcome in another edition of the Red Hawks Coaches Show. We are at Wings, etc. Our home for the Coaches Show. We're in the Jackson location today. So if you're searching for a lunch destination, we invite you to stop by. You can join us right here at Wings, etc. We're in addition to their award-winning Jumbo Wings, number one, as voted by the Southeast Missourians People's Choice Awards. <laughs> They have been voted best wings in Southeast Missouri. If you want wings, we've got plenty of them, plenty of sauces for you uh, for dine-in or carry-out. If you are not in the market for wings, full menu for you. Fresh burgers, wraps, subs, quesadillas. If you'd like an entree salad, we can hook you up there. Smoked ribs. Their appetizer lineup includes their ultimate nachos, their deep-fried pickle spears. And, of course, you'll notice the high-def TVs now back here. In the banquet room, we have uh, highlights of the big win over 13th-ranked Eastern Illinois. Red Hawk football highlights here in high def, but they've got the best sports programming here at Wings, etc. So if you're looking for some place to watch the NFL weekend, college football, this is your home. Uh, baseball playoffs get underway tonight. So if you're looking, uh, you want to watch that wild card game between the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays, you can watch it right here in high def at Wings, etc. Red Hawks getting set to head to Eastern Kentucky University, the 21-time OVC champions coming up on uh, Saturday. Odd start time, 5 o'clock will be the kickoff. Coach Tom Matukowicz is here. And, Coach, we're, we're going to be giving away some pink-up T-shirts uh, each show during the month of October, uh, courtesy of Southeast Health. And anybody that's watching the video or that is here at the show, they can see the pink up uh, Southeast football jersey hanging right behind us today. Yeah, absolutely. This uh, this is a big deal. Uh, pink up capes, a big deal. And so we we uh, last year tried to come alongside St. Francis and and get involved and and try to make a difference. And I could tell you last week it, it really did. Not only were we able to raise some money to help people right here in our own community. Our kids' lives were really impacted by the relationships that were built through that game. And um, for those of you that may not know, um, we auction off a jersey. And what we auction is the name on the back of the jersey. And so if you've lost a loved one or maybe someone has uh, beat cancer, it doesn't have to be necessarily just breast cancer, uh, those players will go play in their honor. And when they get to the locker room after the Red Hawk walk, they read about their name or read about their person and they go play in their honor. And then afterwards they meet the family, the loved ones are given. And I couldn't imagine losing someone and being able to see their name run around out there on how field. That's pretty cool. And so just wanted to show you the Jersey. It's really nice Jersey. Um, they, uh, I think, uh, is it Friday or Saturday? We got like four or five days left on this, um, auction and we still have about 20 jerseys. And the goal is, for every kid that goes out there to have someone to represent. So just really uh, asking for your help to come alongside us. And and even if you haven't uh, lost someone, I know a lot of our players have that that would love to be able to honor one of their loved ones too. And so if you want to want to do that and, and don't have a name, uh, just reach out to me through social media and we can get that thing uh, worked out. And uh, the online auction is now, it's all for breast cancer awareness and uh, for mammograms, to provide yep. mammograms uh, for women who are unable financially to afford it. So it is uh, an absolutely uh, great thing. And the jerseys are pretty cool looking, I think. Yeah, they're really nice. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Nike does a great job. Our, our players are warm a little bit. Uh, I wore one yesterday at a TV show, and and unfortunately, I had number one jersey up, but when I put it on, I felt like a sausage. Everything was just just kind of packed in there, and 
So I was a little disappointed. You know, my wife married a linebacker, you know, back in the day when I was rolling, and now now she's uh, married to an old lineman. But so you went anyway, from rolling to rolly. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but uh, so they look much better just hanging there than on Coach Duke. Well, uh, maybe in honor of uh, of your appearance uh, with the jersey, we could get some sausage races going, like between quarters at, at Hawk Stadium. Get the kind of like they do up in uh, Milwaukee at the Brewers games. Well, you you took that too far. Okay, right? that's yeah. A, yeah. That was a that was a bit of a reach. Uh, wow, how about uh, how about the performance of your football team at uh, Hawk Stadium on Saturday? You knock off the 13th ranked Eastern Illinois Panthers, the seven time. OVC champions. Uh, they came in uh, with tons of momentum. They had a win over an FBS program, Miami, Ohio. They went on the road, beat fifth-ranked Illinois State, and then they uh, they put up almost 700 yards of offense uh, in blistering Austin P. So they were riding a three-game winning streak. They came in red hot. Everything for them was hitting on all cylinders until they saw the Red Hawk defense on Saturday. Well, I tell you, I think it starts with our staff. Um, just, just. Our, our players are very fortunate to have the kind of staff that we have, very committed. Uh, they had a great plan. Uh, our players bought into that plan all week long. They prepared for that opportunity. And, and uh, one thing that was missing, I felt like, was that, that electric sideline. Uh, I showed them plays of Murray that uh, we made big plays in our sideline look like we lost yards. And so that that's something that, that's a staple here that we, we needed to get back to. And I, I don't know. I, you know, a lot of the fans probably saw, but I think our sideline was was as electric as since I've been here, and that was really good. I saw guys running up and down the sideline. The big thing now is to to wave towels, I guess, because I saw a lot of towel waving going on on the sideline. Yeah, because I sent everybody a text message that if you didn't have a towel, I was going to verbally abuse you on the sideline. <laughs> and so uh, that it's amazing kind of results you get, you know. So you win the football game uh, over Eastern Illinois. Uh, 21-14 is the final score. And once again, uh, you take that opening possession, as you did against Murray State. You take it down the field, and you stick it in the end zone. Seven plays, 51 yards. You took three minutes and six seconds off the clock. And it was Jesse Hoskett with a one-yard touchdown run. He accounted for all three touchdowns, either passing or running, uh, but when we think about Jesse Hoskett, the first thing that comes to mind is that rocket arm of his, not his running ability, but, man, at 6'4", 221, uh, he can move some bodies and soak in that offensive line. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. But, you know, let's go back to that, that that's how we started the game. You know, we, we, we have a plan to win, and it's not just offense or defense or special teams. It's the whole thing. So we kick it off. We stop them inside the 20. Our defense goes three and out. Pump return uh, gets our offense the ball around the 50. Like, that's that's why we had Great. this success. So it wasn't just the offense because they got the ball in the 50 because of the, the job the special teams and defense did. And then to go down there and make those plays, and then it was fourth and one, and, and we knew, you know, you got to you gotta get a touchdown there. You kick a field goal there, and, and, and you're playing that type of team. That That's not going to be enough to win that football game. And did a good job. Jesse's, uh, you know – we do a lot of, uh, like, we do wrestling and, and tug-of-war things. You'd be shocked at how strong he is. He's country strong, all right? The, where he's from just got internet last week. I mean, this <laughs> this is a country dude, and he's actually a really strong guy. He's not Dante quick or, or fast, but he's, he's effective in the run game. And he's been a pretty savvy runner. He yeah. has picked his times to tuck the ball and run. Uh, you know, and he's he's also pretty savvy about that when he gets outside the pocket, not trying to force something, throw back across his body, throw middle of the field late in a play, he'll throw the ball away. Or if he sees something, he'll tuck it and run for positive yardage. We've seen that a lot from him. Yeah, great decision maker. I think some of his best plays was when he threw the ball away. You know, one, one turnover there, and that's a different game, you know. And, and so I think uh, – Really appreciate his decision making. It's it's been the same all year long. It's been really solid, and I know Coach Weimers has done a really good job with him. Also, is it a fair statement to say, even though you take the ball near midfield, you drive it down to the one yard line? If you run the field goal unit out there and kick a field goal, Eastern has the momentum in the game. Yeah. Their defense is fired up. Even though you would have scored first, they would have had the momentum. Is that a fair statement? Whereas when you punched it in then you clearly had the momentum. Yeah, exactly. And I couldn't look at my team. 
I mean, it's fourth and one coaching, and, you, and you're you're telling me this and that, and then you're going to kick it? They had to took those towels and beat me with it. So, I mean, at the, you know, you got you to gotta do what you say you're going to be. And what we were going to be on the edge, and we we're going to get it on. And, and so as a play caller and as those uh, game management decisions go on, you got to do the same. One of the team captains, uh, all-conference left guard, Garrett Baker, is here. He's going to join us coming up in a little bit uh, and re help responsible for uh, pushing that pile into the end zone on that fourth and one play with Jesse Hoska. What's uh, We could ask Garrett when he gets up here, but what's the mindset on a short yardage situation like that? Because sometimes you'll see a runner maybe stacked up, slowed down, momentum is stopped, but then you see that offensive line just give this one big push to get a guy a first down or, or to get him into the end zone. Yeah, it's a mentality, and, and we talk about it, even how we ended the game. Uh, we, we call it take their soul, um, where – you know, they don't want to give that up, but then when you physically make them give it, it you know, it's hard to get back up and play another down because you, you physically imposed your will on, on another human being. There are teams in the league that might fall more into the category of finesse teams. Maybe they're a finesse offense. Uh, Eastern Illinois is not that type. They have no. never been that type of team. They are a physical, they out physical teams. They went seven and one in the OVC last year because they out physicaled everybody except Jacksonville State. So you knew the mentality that they had coming in. They were going to make it a street fight. Who is tougher? Who can punch harder? Who's going to be the last one standing? And man, on that final drive, if they could hold you from a first down, they would get the ball back with an opportunity to go down and tie, or if they decided to go for two, maybe even win the football game, and you just beat them. Yeah, we talked I mean, we talked about all week. Uh, the last two games versus Eastern, they were the most physical team. And we, we said, and we challenged Baker and the O-line and the defensive line, we have to be the most physical team. They had one – Eastern Illinois had one series, one series in the fourth quarter. I mean, that tells you how good the offense was. And to, to get the ball with 540, I think, was left on the clock and end it tells you a lot. Now, they had some, uh, some uh, I don't know, you know, some really bad stuff happen at the end there with some penalties that if that guy played for me, he'd have been walking back to Illinois. Did he make? Did he throw the football at yeah. the at the at the referee? I mean, they it, thought it was a fumble, right? And so he was upset, and you know, you can't let your emotions take over the, at that point. Um, but he threw the ball, and he probably, you know, you know, he said something. So I'm sure it wasn't, "Hey, great call, Mister Official. I hope you have a safe ride home." It was probably something else, which got him the 15 yarder, and then we were able to ice it. And then you had a late hit on the sideline. I mean, they, yeah. you know, th those are those are penalties that can cost you football games. And you you've talked about, hey, we need to clean up uh, some ill-timed penalties yeah. in our game, and you certainly did in the Eastern yeah. Illinois game. But those are the type of penalties that that attribute to losing football, right? Yeah. It comes down to leadership and frustration, and and you know. You're still thinking about maybe what happened on the last play, and then you you make a mistake like that, and it just it just kills you. Uh, so I know they're frustrated, but man, that that is a you know no one in that locker room had ever beat EIU. I mean that was a that was a big win for us uh, as a program to take that step, and um, you know just it, it it still comes back to the process, and and our guys are buying into the process of what it takes to play well on Saturday. You know, you have to practice well on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, you know, we got to get right back to it. I'm worried about them. And the, the, there was, um, you know, the celebration. It was like we won the Super Bowl and as it should be, you know, but that's that's not what we work hard for. You know, there's a lot more left. And so we got to be hungry. We can't be satisfied. Last 12 meetings with Eastern Illinois going into that game, 2-10. and 10, Your last win over EIU 2011. That was Jimmy Garoppolo's sophomore season. And that's the last time that a Southeast football team had beaten Eastern Illinois. How did it feel from a coaching standpoint with your coaching staff? How did it feel to make the game plan and to talk to your team all week about we have to be tougher and more physical than one of the premierly physical teams in this league year in and year out and to, to go into the locker room afterwards and say mission accomplished, we were tougher than they were? Yeah, I mean, it, it's very gratifying. The thing that I've always liked about this team, I've liked our team the whole year, even in fall camp. They, they listen. 
Now they're they're they may do something stupid, but they they listen and they try, and all year long it just you know they want to do it. You know you just. It, it does, it, the coaches are doing a great job. I don't know how you can jump on a team any quicker than you did after, first of all, after the first touchdown. And then less than three minutes later, you get the football, and rather than just try to gain four or five yards on a handoff, uh, you know, on first down, you decide, nope, we're going for it. Play action. Jesse Hoskett hits Adrian Davis on a perfect throw. You can't make a throw any better. He got behind the defense, 62 yards untouched, and all of a sudden they're staggered in the neutral corner because you just put 14 points on it. Yeah, exactly. I think our receivers are starting to come on a little bit. Uh, Coach Martin's done a good job with them, and and that was that was just a beautifully executed play. I mean, it was stride for stride, and it's some plays that we've come up short on. We we haven't connected on those. And to be this kind of offense, we got to be able to make big plays off of our identity, right? Our identity is running the football, and so we got to be able to make big plays off of that in the, in the play action. I don't want to put too much on Adrian Davis. Uh, no one's going to fill Paul McRoberts' shoes. But the thing about McRoberts, he was a big play guy. Adrian Davis made a really big play to win the game at Murray State. And that was a really big play on Saturday. Is he showing you signs he could be a big play guy? Yeah, he is. I mean, he always has. I mean, uh, he's been able to catch the football really well. And we just uh, just really challenge him to be a complete player. You know, when uh, when the film's on and you're getting ready to catch a post, it looks magnificent. When the film's on and you're the backside of a run play, what's it look like? You know, and that's what that's the, the maturation of a young player into no matter, you know, this is the standard. The standard is my best. Okay. Whether I'm getting the ball or not getting the ball, the standard is my best, whether it's Tuesday or Saturday. And so that, you know, it's, it's working more towards all the time. And we need uh, him and the rest of the uh, team to continue to fight for that standard every day. So you're up 14 uh, nothing, and then Eastern Illinois puts together its lone scoring drive in the first half. They go eight plays, 78 yards. They get an 18-yard touchdown run from Christopher Anderson, who came in as their third-string running back. But the week before, he got his first collegiate playing time at EIU and had 129 yards, a couple of touchdowns against an, an overmatched Austin P team. So they bring Anderson, and that was really the first time he was in the game, an 18-yard touchdown run. Uh, and it's something we really haven't seen when the big plays come this year. It is usually come in the passing game against your defense. Rarely have you given up a big touchdown run, but uh, it didn't phase you. It didn't appear. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we were able to play good defense at that particular play. We missed a tackle. I think their backs uh, will probably be as good as we've seen all yeah. year. I mean, they, they are up there with Memphis. Uh, they, they're big and fast. So when a guy gets a guy wrapped up and we don't drive what we call drive for five and, and that guy breaks off, you know, they're able to take the distance. I had several third down conversions on the, the running back. We had guys there. They were just, they were just uh, faster. So they're, they're pretty talented. There's a reason they were that good on offense and they beat the people they beat. Well, uh, Christopher Anderson, the guy who ran for 100 yards, was named OVC Newcomer of the Week. He's the third string guy. Their second string guy played two years, and he played – at Arkansas, yeah. and he's second string behind Devin Church. I mean, that's uh, that's yeah. pretty. I mean, Church transferred from the University of Illinois. Yeah. So I mean, that that's a deep backfield. Yeah. They they got good players. They've been able. I think they had over twenty uh, Division One transfers, and that's not been my model, but it's worked for them. You'll be playing a, a team in Eastern Kentucky that over the years has taken some Division One transfers. We'll yeah. talk more about that. So it's halftime. You're up 14 to seven. Uh, what's your message in the locker room to your team at halftime? Up a touchdown, knowing you're going to get the second half kickoff. Well, we've done that. We've done a good half, and that was my message. We haven't done a four quarter. So, can we do the same thing for four quarters? Uh, was the message keep doing what you're doing? Uh, don't don't let it slide. Uh, and and for for four quarters, and then obviously that that I I think the play so far of the year was when we turn it over on offense it was the opening drive of the second half. We, we throw a, a bad, it was a lack of exec, execution. It turns into a touchdown for Eastern. 
Okay. You try to swing pass out to the right to Tremaine McCullough. It was behind the line. It was a lateral. He he didn't come up with it. Got it, and he didn't. So there, you know, there's plenty of people to point the fingers at. But the bottom line is, my message to the offense all week was: we haven't been able to respond. When things are good, they're good, and when we have a problem, it it gets you know we never get out of the funk. And I felt like for the first time. They responded because that was a really significant event that happened. And so uh, they got to the sideline. They kind of got their minds right, and then they, they they went back at it. You never seen a letdown. It was a bad play, but it never led to more bad plays. They flushed it and then just kept executing. And I think that was, you know, that was a huge stepping stone for our offense. How fluky is it, though, for the second time in three weeks that a fumble bounces right up into a guy's hand as he's running and he runs it in for a touchdown? When you fumble a ball, usually someone falls on it. Yeah. They don't bounce up to guys and they run it uh, all the way in for a touchdown. It happened, uh, what was it, S- or SIU. A- SIU, and then it happens uh, against uh, Eastern Illinois. Those are fluky plays. Yeah, I mean, it. it uh, I think it's just – I look at as a big man making sure I, I don't gloss over that and I fix it because you can't turn the ball. That's one of our keys to victory this this week. I'm not going to share all of them because I don't want them to hear that. But one of you know one of them is the turnover margin. We're just average. And if we're average, we're not going to win this weekend and we're definitely not going to win a, an OVC title. But our defense hadn't been on the field and gave up two touchdowns. Like we, you know, we can – Blame it away, blame, complain, and defend, and guess what will happen? It will happen again because we need to look in the mirror and fix it. As far as uh, as turnover margin goes in the OVC, I think you're, uh, you're even at this point, but – one thing that I did notice, let me find turnover margin. We're even, and we're, we've – You've lost four fumbles this year. You only lost three all of last year, so that, that's a little a little odd compared yeah. to what happened last year. Yeah. I mean, that, that Interceptions are down, though. Yep. So, I mean, you know, we got we to gotta work on that, and we got to uh, not only not turn it over, we're not getting enough. You know, we got one huge one in the red zone by defense. That was, that was you know, game-winning type stuff because that's a huge swing <laughs> – but overall, we have not accomplished that goal. We need to get more takeaways, and, and that's going to be a point of emphasis all week long. Passing the football to your tight ends has not been uh, in the offense really much at all. I mean, Marquette Murdoch is a, is a good player. Obviously, 17 touchdown receptions in high school. He's out of Ridgeway High School in Memphis. Uh, has been more of a blocker than a pass catcher for you. Uh, but you get a short yardage situation near midfield. Was a fourth down? Third and one. Third, third and one. So you fake the run as you overstack the right side of the line, and then you release Marquette Murdoch downfield up the right sideline. There wasn't a defender within a Cape County mile of Marquette Murdoch, and he catches the ball, goes in for the touchdown, 45 yards, turns out to be the game winner. What a play call that was. Oh, really was. You know, it was a great job by Coach Weimers. It was third and one. It was probably four down territory. So if we didn't get it, we were probably going to go for it anyway. And so he, he had a great call, his great execution. It looked like uh, Marquette was catching a baby on fire. He wasn't going to drop it. Now. I mean, <laughs> he, I mean, he was he he was going to make sure he caught it and did and got in the end zone, and that, that ended up being the game winner. So he caught two balls last year. He had one catch for eight yards all season going into that game. He ends up with three catches, including the game-winning touchdown reception. Is he a guy that we might see a little more in the in the offense? Yeah, I mean we we got him out in rounds. We haven't just been able to execute well. He's actually a, a way better pass catcher than a, a run blocker, um, but he he does try hard, and you know he's he's a he's a good option there. And we may have heard his name earlier in the season. He was open on what could have been a yeah. touchdown yeah. at Memphis up yeah. the right sideline. Exactly. It wasn't the same play, I don't believe, but. But uh, the ball was just uh, – they did, you didn't make connections, but he was open. Yep. We may have heard his name a little earlier on in the season, so it's not like he hasn't been in the game plan. Yeah, for sure. And I think we you know, we got to continue to be able to throw the ball. I think the, the O-line did a really good job of protection. You know, uh, Murray, we didn't protect very well, and, and against Eastern we did. So I think Jesse had a little more time to find some of those guys. And this is a, a defense in Eastern Illinois. They came in uh, with eight sacks sacking the quarterback, and Jesse 
didn't really need to wash his uniform afterwards. He didn't. He didn't get hit. Yeah, exactly. They they held him. Uh, you know, they held all the pressure off, and I think our backs are protecting well. Um, so uh, overall, we we're making strides there. I, I still think there's a great opportunity for growth. Uh, you know, and continue uh, to to improve. And I'm looking forward to this week. That front four for Eastern Illinois, they've got the South Carolina transfer, David Johnson. They've got Jarvis Williams, who's a premier guy. All the tackles for loss. Is that as good a defensive line as you guys have played against this year? I'll ask Garrett Baker yeah. uh, when he comes up here. But uh, right across the line, I mean, they got a lot of ferocious guys on that yeah, defensive they line. Do. Well, I can tell you already what Garrett's great. He's never met a good player. He thinks that base terrible, which you love about him. But uh, it's certainly uh, – a, a good defense. I mean, they, they were good and um, we're going to face a really good D line this week. I mean, they, they've done a good job. They were good last year and um, you know, they got really good players there. You can make the argument, probably uh, the top three teams going into the season, Jacksonville, Eastern Illinois, Eastern Kentucky. That's the way it has yeah. been the last several years, yep. but also uh, those are always, it seems like, the most physically tough teams on the line of scrimmage. So yeah. Eastern Kentucky is going to be right in that boat. Exactly right. They've uh, recruited well. they got really good facilities. They're in a good area to recruit. And so I think they have 17 transfers, uh, Division One transfers. And, and so, you know, players aren't the problem. We'll talk more about Eastern Kentucky coming up, but uh, after the – Touchdown to Marquette Murdoch. Then the sense of urgency was there a little bit more for Eastern Illinois. They took their shots downfield. You started to see a little more urgency from their offense, and your defense did not crack. What what was the the entire time that you were trying to hold on to that?
nine yards in a loss to Tennessee Tech. Their quarterback threw for over 460 yards. He's the only quarterback in Eastern Kentucky school history to have two 400-yard passing games under his belt, and he's coming off Benny Coney, a 400-yard passing game. So the numbers say this is an even better offense and a better passing offense. Yeah, this is a huge game, and, and we got a huge challenge. We're 3-23 and 23 against Eastern Kentucky. Let me just let that sink in. Okay, that's, the, that's, that's who we are, and that's the truth. All right, so what an opportunity. You talk about a brick. I mean, this is a big game. It's a huge game. OVC on the road. At the end of the show. So let's take a time out here from Wings, etc. in Jackson. Garrett Baker will join us when we come back on SEMO ESPN. It's been growing about Wings, etc. See, Wings, etc. has those award winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine in and carry out. Now, the word is getting out about Wings, etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HDTVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. 
The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special starting at just six forty-nine. Plus, Wings Etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59-cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings Etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. And the whole community is excited about how Wings Etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings Etc. is a really big deal around here. Hey, everyone. Proactive has a special offer for our listeners. Stay tuned for a 100% risk-free offer that includes a free giveaway and free shipping. You have acne or even the occasional breakout with prescription grade proactive your acne can heal and you can prevent future breakouts want to try proactive they're letting everyone try proactive 100 risk-free plus they're giving away a free deep cleansing face brush and free shipping when you call right now 800-644-2599 you heard right a risk-free trial of proactive a free deep cleansing brush and free shipping take it from me Uh, the Wings, etc. in Jackson. So we appreciate you joining us. And as far as the menu here at Wings, if you're thinking about uh, lunch, they have a terrific lunch menu. In fact, their daily half-pound lunch specials start for as little as just six forty-nine. And they have the terrific laid-back atmosphere here. We mentioned all of the high-definition televisions, food and drink specials throughout the week, including on Mondays. They have their fifty-nine cent wings. They have the kids' menu. They've got family-friendly video games. And keep in mind, they're open seven days a week and late on the weekends because sometimes the games run late. Garrett Baker, all-conference left guard for the Red Hawks, joining us here on the Coach's Show. Uh, so the coach uh, told us about your automobile sales skills. Uh, how did that How did that come about? Yes, sir. When uh, Well, I went to Coach, and I said, uh, you know, I'd like to get um, – a job in sales or something because that's what i'm kind of wanting to do after college he said well i know this kind of crazy guy john sinclair i think it's kind of right down your alley um you know so he kind of hooked me up with him and i met john he's a great guy he gave me an awesome opportunity and um i was able to come in and be a sales consultant for him for the month of may june july and august and a little bit of august but we had fall camp so i had to um stop then but um you know i just really appreciate him taking me in and showing me the ropes and uh giving me a little bit of experience sales experience now what was your previous sales experience and what was your public speaking experience because that enters into it when you're trying to uh, talk to someone about buying an automobile one of the major purchases in life that we have yeah communicate may um, so I like to think I know how to talk to people. I like talking to people. I like helping people. Um, you know, you have the car salesman persona, you know, but really you get to help people a lot. A lot of people come in struggling. You get to help them get in a new car or um, in a car that they need. And, you know, you get to, you know, put a smile on their face and, and it's nice. And, you know, it's different every day. You're not doing the same thing. You have different people you're talking to. I love the people I worked with. And uh, it was really great. Experience. Now, John Sinclair, that's Nissan, right? Yes, sir. See, I drive a Nissan Armada. That's and nice so vehicle. it is they're, they're mm -hmm. terrific so you, you don't have 17s to... that came out i have not seen them yet yeah i will let's yeah they're nice going? they're real so, nice so i'm a nissan guy so i'm right there with you but uh you how how do you make the determination when someone comes in are we going new are we going pre-owned are we going certified pre-owned how does that work um well you kind of just you really get a base on kind of 
what the person is like when they first come in. You don't want to just say, you know, hey, you know, you're looking new, use, you know, you kind of just build a profile with them, you know, talk to them, see where they're from, you know, what their name is, what they're looking for, who they're buying for. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, scenarios. Um, you know, John doesn't like it to be pushy, so you give them options, you give them information on different vehicles, and you let them choose, and then, you know, there are John, I love working with the guys there. Um, and that may be something, um, like I said, I'm taking master classes right now. Um, and I may um, decide to continue those in the spring. And so I'll need to have a job because um, I won't have football or anything. So John has uh, given me more than one opportunity to come back in, in January and work for him. So I may have to take him up on that. So corporate communications is mm -hmm. your major. What's, uh, what's the difference between a, a communications major and a corporate communications major? Um, I don't know that. I just know I went for business and I couldn't really do the math. So I had to go corporate <laughs> communication and, and, uh, you know, that's the truth. That's the truth right there. Um, and you're you know, working on your master's in higher education, higher education administration. Um, that's what kind of interested me. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to be a coach. Um, you know, I could be a principal superintendent, you know, there's, there's a lot of options within that. Um, and I didn't want to just go to school and, you know, take P classes or blow off classes, you know, if I'm gonna go to school, I'll just go and start my master's and, and, uh, you know, see where that takes me because, you know, I keep telling my parents, I really, you know, everybody asks, what do you want to do? I, I really don't know. So I guess I'll just keep going to school until I find out, you know, the, uh, the fact that you play for Southeast and you're on the football team, how long into a sales conversation with somebody, does that come up? Just about every single time, you know, well, mostly somebody will ask me about my size and they'll say, you're a football player, aren't you? I'm like, no, tennis. And they're like, really? <laughs> I'm like, no, you know, yeah, I play football, Simo. And it's a good conversation starter. And, and uh, you know, it leads to other conversation and, and it kind of puts people at ease, um, you know. Um, so that was that was big. I was going to say, anything to put them at ease with your size, you, you, you probably <laughs> could be intimidating to some yeah, people. Yeah, my sweet talking, so. Well, that's good. And, you know, you, you got to work on the confidence issue, though. That's yeah, that's a big thing. So you're from Owensville, yep, Missouri. Population twenty six hundred. What uh, what was it like growing up in uh, Owensville? Uh, small town. You had to drive, you know, forty five minutes to go to a movie, hour and a half to go buy a new pair of shoes. Um, you know, old dirt roads, hunting, fishing. You know, it's easy living. It was nice for me to come down to Cape because. Um, I got that small town kind of atmosphere. I don't like really the big city, you know, all the interstates, stoplights and all that, you know, around campus, I kind of got that small town atmosphere and, and I really like that. It's what drew me down here. Um, and you know, the mall is like five minutes away movies, you know, you got all the restaurants and everything across, you know, town a little bit. And so that was just kind of brought me here and I love it here. Hey, you guys have a post office in Owensville. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we do. Good. <laughs> uh, I did a little research on Owensville. We got uh, a McDonald's. That's the big thing. That's huge. Yeah. Back in 1840, uh, there was a crossroads of a trail and an ox cart path, and they built a general store there, and they were deciding the name of your town. And apparently, the general store was aimed by, named or owned by a guy named Francis Owen, and then there was a blacksmith named Edward Luster. So those two men decided that they were going to have a competition. And whoever won, the town would be named after them. So apparently, uh, they got into a game of horseshoes, and the blacksmith named Edward Luster won the game, but he was so impressed with Francis Owen, the guy that he beat, that he decided that the privilege of naming the town he would give to Mr. Owens, and that is how they decided to go with Owensville. He thought it sounded better than Lusterville. <laughs> I agree with them. That's uh, very interesting. I didn't know that that kind of went down, but Lusterville, yeah, thank God it was. So horseshoes bad. must be big in in Owensville. Um, yeah, I'm not a big horseshoe player, but I know at the fair, there's, I mean, we got like 50 horseshoe pits lined up. There's always a bunch of guys throwing there. Um, I've never had the opportunity to throw. My dad never threw, so I guess that's why I never really got into it. But yeah, I guess it's pretty big down there. So the reason that uh, you have already graduated is because you redshirted a year and you suffered an injury early on in your career. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, I had a couple unfortunate injuries to really start off. Um, coming in as a freshman, I uh, broke my foot in an all-star game in the summer, so I never really got full go until like the second week or the last two weeks of the season my freshman year. So I just kind of was on scout team and just kind of went through the motions through there. And then my sophomore year was ended up starting at right tackle or redshirt freshman year. And uh, the first play of the first game went out and, and uh, the fullback kind of fell into my lane.
again, I never really traveled with the team because, you know, it was just kind of a hassle. So, um, but yeah, I was just thinking back um, just yesterday, like, man, I got six left, six left my career. I know I'm not going to the NFL, you know, so I'm going to do my, you know, do my part, do my, you know, 10 strong and, uh, you know, play my best, try to do my best for the team. Best of luck Saturday at uh, Eastern Kentucky. Thanks so much for the time. Thank we you. appreciate Thanks it, Garrett. That's Red Hawks team captain, all-conference left guard, Garrett Baker. We'll wrap things up with Coach Tuke, talk about their opponent, the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. When we come back, we're at Wings, etc. in Jackson. Red Hawks Coaches Show on SEMO ESPN. And growing up.